Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. Today we are addressing some storage issues in the back of the FJ. Stay tuned. All right guys, so here we are at the back of the FJ. And one of the things I wanted to talk about and try to address in this video is storage. We all know that as overlanders, uh, storage is a commodity that you never have enough of. So we are prepping for a camping trip this weekend and I'm trying to figure out a way to pack out the truck because when I take, take both dogs, I lose all of the storage space up here. So that limits me severely to just the space on top of the Goose Gear camp kitchen and the additional box. So when I put my camp chairs in there alone, uh, that eats up almost all of this deleted seat space. Um, so yeah, trying to bring two dogs makes this nearly impossible. Um, but I think I found an answer for that um, through a company that is called Bison Gear. Some of you guys may know them or have heard of them. They typically make like drop down tables and shelving systems. Um, this is what the company is called. Um, so this is gonna be my remedy to try to find more space um, that just isn't being utilized that could be utilized. Uh, everything came packaged well. The box had additional cardboard on the corners to keep the corners of it safe. Um, and these are the two molly panels for the rear quarter windows. And then this is the shelf that gets put together in between them. I don't think it's gonna be an extremely hard install, um, but that's what we're currently working with. One of the other things they did for us was send a ton of stickers. Um, so I'll hand those out to those of you guys at Car Meets, or I'll put them in um, packages once I get to that point in this whole YouTube career. Um, so we're getting ready to knock this out um, right, right now. So first thing is first, you did have to remove these two tie downs right here. Uh, this is what they look like. And then you also have to remove your top coat hanger because the top coat hanger will have this bracket that will go between uh, the coat hanger hook and the ceiling right there. Uh, one of the things I saw on YouTube that wasn't explained so well is where these spacers go. These spacers do end up going down low on the back side of this bracket uh, to keep it flush. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out and get this side mounted. So there is the driver's side panel mounted in, but I did have some issues. Um, down here on these bottom two screws, I wasn't sent any washers. So luckily for me, uh, I had some that I had here at the house. Um, yeah, not sure if that's uh, the case normally, but I was missing my two bottom two. So I had to source some to get it to work in there. Um, and then just know that the Allen keys for these bolts are a four, and then the uh, nuts that go on the back of the two at the top are a 10 mil. Um, so my next step is to tighten up the top. I've already tightened up the bottom. And then honestly, I think I'm gonna have to take out my fridge and this goose gear box right here in order to gain access to the uh, subwoofer bolts uh, on the other side of this uh, square box right here. So I'm definitely gonna have to take this goose gear system out. There's a total of eight bolts in here though, and those are an 11 to pull those back out so I can get that access that I need. Your camp kitchen is out. Super easy to take those in and out, just a couple of bolts. But it's probably a better thing that I went ahead and did this because I've been hearing a rattle from the back, but it looks like it was a subwoofer. So not sure what that's about, but we gotta remove it anyway to so be able to fit the other bracket down behind there. So we're about to tackle that. All right guys, and with that subwoofer out, it gives me plenty of room to the space that I need right here. Um, I think the reason that my subwoofer was loose is it looks like one of these prongs on this other side broke off. So maybe that's where the wiggle's coming from. It's only held in there by two 10 mil bolts at the bottom of the subwoofer anyway. So it doesn't look like it's really in there all that well. But I'm gonna go ahead and hang this new bracket from the top to see where it lines up down here at the bottom before I drill any holes. Uh, and then we'll start going from there. Hang it from the top so I can match this up with this bottom plate down here to see where this one needed to be for the screws to be able to come through this and bolt to here. But the next step is, is on top of this bracket, it has several holes cut out where these screws right here 
are supposed to get punched through and then that is held on with these little tiny screws and 3m tape that's on the bottom side of that bracket so i'm about to put these little screws in and then bolt it the rest of the way together and there it is i was able to get this mounted uh, again this bottom bracket right here has several screws that run in through the top of it along with 3m tape so i lined that up first put down the tape ran the screws through it and then i could bolt everything up in a way that uh got everything to line up so the next step is going to be putting the subwoofer back in making sure that's tight um then i will go ahead and come back over here and i'm gonna assemble this shelf outside of the car first before i try to go put it in the car and then once i have that shelf assembled and in then of course i gotta put um the dometic and the case from goose gear that holds it back in there as well my only one concern that i don't know about right now is how low that that shelf will sit within the trunk of the fj i hope that there is enough clearance height so that it doesn't hit the top of this um goose gear box but there is only one way to find All out right. and these two halves do just slide together and then there's several holes that you have to run bolts through in order to make this um one shelf uh, and then there's also some mounting brackets that came in here that I assume is how you hang them to each of the molly panels that are in the quarter windows. So I'm going to go ahead and put this together and trying to fit it into the truck. So there's the shelf fully assembled. Um, just make sure that all your screws match. It's pretty easy to put the shelf together. I have my brackets on the ends of these pretty loosely. So now we're going to take this thing and try to go mount it in the truck. Might be awkward and might need another set of hands, but I'll let you guys know. Yeah, guys, so it wasn't so easy getting these L-shaped brackets in the corner to mount to the top of the molly panel. So I ended up having to use my electric ratchet to give me a hand to hold that in the right place while I got the bolts on there loosely. So now I'm getting ready to move over to the other side, also using my Ignig propane tank to help me hold it so I can get this other side mounted. So once I get it in and uh, all tightened up, I'll show you guys the finished product. There is the finished product. Uh, it doesn't look like there's a lot of room when you're looking at it from the front, but the roof of the FJ does bow up quite a bit. So there's actually quite a bit of space up there and with these being molly panels you can mount stuff to the bottom or even the sides but one of the things we always have issues with is where to put like dirty clothes and i kind of like these windows right here we could just stuff our dirty clothes into there until we get back home so we can wash them but uh i like that it did make this window space a usable space um, rather than just a dead zone so hopefully with this all installed and everything being all said and done that the Goose Gear Camp Kitchen now will fit in there without hitting the top. I think it's gonna be close, but I think we got enough clearance for it to fit. I haven't bolted anything down. I just went ahead and set this in there, but we got just enough space of clearance so that those two don't hit. I'm really liking how this came out. And into the final steps, we gotta bolt down our camp kitchen. Then once that's bolted down, I need to put my fridge back in there uh, and my Coleman camp stove that's sitting right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out and then I'll show you guys everything when it's finished. So I just wanted to cover this one more time. When you guys are reinstalling your Goose Gear drawers, sometimes it's a real pain to get them to line up. So something that I always end up doing is wedging some sort of screwdriver in between the body paneling and the shelf itself to push it back to the right in order to get these bolt holes to line up again. If you don't have something to wedge down in here, this whole process uh, will become very frustrating. So just keep that in mind. All right, and here is the finished product. Love the way that this turned out. And uh, I got lucky on it clearancing that Goose Gear Camp Kitchen because I didn't measure anything at all. But this does give you quite a bit of space, more so than what I thought it would because the uh, roof of the FJ kind of curves up. So we should be able to hopefully fit our chairs up here, our pillows up here, uh, and any other kind of smaller items, maybe toiletries. This pocket over here, I'm probably gonna use for maybe dirty clothes or something along those lines. I wanna get a medic bag and hang it right there and probably a fire extinguisher and hang it right here. Um, not quite sure what I'm gonna put down the middle yet, but uh, I like that this gave me some of my space back. Uh, Cause as we all know, real estate is a hard commodity to find in this overlanding community. All right, and that knocks out another install on the FJ Cruiser. Uh, if you guys like this one, please hit that like and subscribe button it really helps me out on YouTube and I'll catch you guys next week with another one.